Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Good to see all of your smiley faces. We welcome you to our show. It is Wednesday. This is actually our second show of the day. We came in earlier. We did a surprise uh, host chat, lovely viewer chat pop-up show earlier with all of our viewers around the world. It popped on around 9.25 a.m., 9.30 this morning, Eastern. I came in from uh, running and cycling along the coast. We're here in the greater New York area along the southern New England coast uh, between New York and Boston. Beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, gorgeous day here. Uh, everybody out and about, the parks and everything. Everybody, of course, social distancing and doing the things they need to do. So we were walking and cycling uh, this morning, uh, and then I had to rush to get into a uh, studio because I was on the air on the radio with multiple shows in my professional world and uh, to host and then television work as well. So I had a little window of opportunity and I said, you know what, what the heck, you know, I'm all casual. I just got in from cycling and biking. Let's do a quick surprise. Hello to everybody, all our faithful viewers who watch literally all around the world. And we thank you for that. And do one of our uh, famous surprise host chat, lovely viewer chat pop up shows. So we did a Wednesday morning surprise pop up show and it went about an hour, I think a little over an hour. It was just supposed to be, as I always say, about 10 minutes but it turned out to be an hour and so many people popped in, lots of new people and our regular lovely viewers as well. So if you were with us this morning uh, on our pop-up show, thank you very much for joining us. If you missed the pop-up show, you can see it on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Matter of fact, all the episodes of our entertainment lifestyle talk show series, the Gym Masters Show Live, are available for you on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And literally, I think a couple of our uh, viewers said we've done around 400 episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series now, which blows me away. It's totally exceeded my expectations. I can't believe it. You know, we turned on the lights and uh, built the home studio back in late April, early May last year sort of as an extension of my professional work as a television and radio personality and presenter and host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist. And uh, I said, hey, let's give it a shot. Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, bringing back the lost art of conversation, you know, in the style of Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Dick Cavett, uh, Johnny Carson, Steve Allen, some of the greats, and blending it in with the modern vibe uh, of today. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And we've done some 400 episodes, I've been told. I'm so busy doing the shows, I lost track of how many episodes we've done. But I know sometimes we do two a day, just like we did today. This is our second show of the day. We did that pop-up show earlier, and it was really, really cool. So we had a coffee talk with all of our viewers. Nice to see everybody chiming in. We've got an amazing guest tonight. Of course, you know, we always have inspiring conversations, amazing guests, light love and levity, and our famous lovity. Now, lovity came from... <laughs> A uh, slip of the tongue in the summer when I said uh, light love and levity, and I said love and let it levity a little too fast. And all of a sudden, pew, out of my mouth was levity. So from that day forward in the summertime, has uh, coined that phrase, and it's been absolutely incredible. The viewers call themselves the Lovities. They call me Mr. Lovity. They call this Lovity Hall. They welcome our guests as uh, Lovities as well. And uh, I think that's a beautiful thing. Let's check in and chime in with our viewers around the world. First, I want to let you know we've got an extraordinary guest here on the show. We were just having a wonderful chat moments ago. And um, Tony nominated Olivier and Drama Desk award-winning actor and producer. Jenna Robbins is here live from New York City. Uh, her mom is with her. Her mom is 99. God bless her mom. She's watching over her mom. And her mom is also watching us right now. So is mine in Florida. <laughs> and wait till you see the color that Jenna is wearing as well. 
I tell you, great minds, kindred spirits think alike. It is uncanny. Going to be with us in just a second. First, let's greet, as we always love to do. You know, I'm a very viewer-centric, interactive host. Uh, we love to welcome everybody. We welcome you, of course, to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Nice to have you here. Willie is watching in Holland. Matter of fact, Willie was with us earlier for our pop-up surprise show we did, our earlier show this morning. Good to see Willie. Hello, Jim. Glad to be here. Greetings to all my friends on the Gym Master Show. She watches there in uh, beautiful Holland in the Netherlands. Thank you very much, Willie. Mary Bishop is uh, tuning in from Florida, beautiful Pine Island, Florida. We love when Mary tunes in. Good to see you, Mary. Kathy Short is here from Cleveland, Ohio. Good evening, Jim and Lovities. Nice to see everyone tonight. Good to see you as well, Kathy. We love when you tune in from good old Cleveland, from Connecticut. Crystal Nolan is here. She says, hi, Jim and everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to an exciting show with inspiring conversation. And of course, our famous Lovity. Jill Jason is here. Hi, everyone. XOXO. Good to see you as well. As always, Lovity Jill, nice to have you with us on the show as well. I also love how our Lovity viewers all say hello to each other. I think that is really wonderful. Oh boy, a second show for wonderful Juanita. Juanita was with us this morning as well from South Africa. She was sneaking in watching while she was at work. Several people did that. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> Good to see you in South Africa, Juanita. Hello, Jim and Lovity family. And she sent that beautiful calendar. Uh, we uh, debuted it yesterday on the show. It was absolutely fantastic. And Jill says, hi, Jim. Good to see you as well. Jason, communications, master your power. I love that name, uh, Jill, especially with the name Masters. Good to see you. Joy Lorenzo in New York City is with us. Hello, Jim. And how is Connor? How's your grandson, Connor? I hope he's doing well. Nice picture of you guys. Kathleen Walker, also in New York City, is checking in. Hey, Jim. Hi. I hope everyone is doing well. We are doing well. Hope you are as well. Kathleen, I know you got a busy day. I think this is your first day, right? Um, working with, you work with the New York Mets at City Field in the city. And uh, with everything sort of still code-like, you're not sure where they're going to place you. So uh, hopefully that worked out for you. And for her second show of the day today, we've done, again, this is our second show today. Hello, Jim. And hello again. Love the pop-up show in the morning. Hi, all lovelies. We'll do more of those. I love doing those. We did a Valentine's Day one. We did a St. Patrick's Day show. Love doing it for all of you. Ann Wozniak is in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Beautiful where you are there too. Juanita says, uh, love the pop-up show earlier, Jim. Was great seeing you. And the lovelies. Uh, end of the month, 400 shows I've done. Wow. I didn't realize I've done 400 shows. That's a lot of talking. <laughs> I guess I'm putting my college degree to work, huh? Thanks for counting, Willie. I appreciate that. Uh, happy World Health Day, Jim and Lovelies. Beautiful. Welcome, actress, producer, Jenna Robbins, to the show tonight. Uh, didn't see the pop-up. You can re-watch it. You watch most of it in the archives. Terrific. Let the lovity begin. And good to see you in North Carolina. Karen is here watching from Boston's North Shore. Excited to see Jenna. We have a lot of family in the Boston area. My grandparents came from Boston, from Waltham. And uh, before that, from Europe, my grandmother came from Sweden. She was a princess, lived in a castle, part of the Swedish royal family in Gothenburg, Sweden, and then settled in Boston. How's that for trivia? And then she met her husband, my great-grandfather, and the rest is history from there. Good to see you in Boston and Beantown. We love it. Um, tomorrow is opening day for uh, the New York Mets. That's right. June is here, our dear friend June, Rachel Sinaspa. Hi, Jim and Jenna. Hi, Jim and Jenna, when she gets on. <laughs> so we'll pause the hello for Jenna until she appears on the screen. <laughs> well, we'll do a twice. We'll do a two hello for her. Um, twice, double lovity, we call it. David Smith is here. David, welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. Uh, anybody watching on our YouTube channel, we would absolutely love it if you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's 400 episodes of incredible guests from all walks of life here on our show. And we have so much interactive um, levity and lovity with all of our viewers all around the world. David Smith says, good evening. I'm new here. 
Welcome to the club, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you here. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live. And then sometimes we have more than one show. Coming up this Saturday night, Dee Wallace, Hollywood legend Dee Wallace is joining us. You know her from E.T., the extraterrestrial, and uh, the Hells Have Eyes, the Howling, television shows galore. She's extraordinary. She's going to join us coming up. Uh, we have two shows, actually, on Saturday as well. But right now, boy, are we blessed to have Jenna Robbins here on the show. She's extraordinary, and uh, she's really a breath of fresh air. She is not only, you know, award-winning, she's also a really, really sweet person. Tony nominated as well as Olivier and Drama Desk award-winning Broadway producer and actor. She's appeared in leading roles on Broadway and Good News, I Love My Wife, Crimes of the Heart, of course, Gypsy where she stood by for Tyne Daly as Mama Rose while playing the bumpet with a trumpet roll of Mazeppa and the tale of the allergist's wife too, covering both Linda Lavin and Michelle Lee on Broadway and starring opposite Valerie Harper in the national tour. Most recently, she starred off Broadway in This One's For The Girls and her duo cabaret show, We Just Move On, the songs of Kander and Ebb. Uh, with Haley Swindoll. She made her Broadway uh, producing debut with Little Women starring Sutton Foster and earned her Tony nomination for her part in transferring the Kennedy Center production of Ragtime to Broadway. She also held a financial stake in both the Broadway production and national tours of Warhorse and also Something's Rotten. Jenna won an Olivia Award as producer on the London production of Company and is currently producer on the Broadway production as well, which is scheduled to Hopefully reopen in the fall. Keep those fingers crossed, gang. We sure are. Uh, also the recipient of the Drama Desk Off-Broadway Alliance and Outer Critics Circles Award as the lead producer of Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish. Productions planned for Australia as well as national tour beginning at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles, currently on hold due to the pandemic. But again, fingers crossed. Other Off-Broadway Producing credits include I Love You Because and Through the Night, Drama Desk nomination, among other shows, including uh, currently in development are The Astonishing Times and Timothy Cratchit, which she recently had its uh, world premiere at the Hope Mill Theatre in Manchester, England, and The Jazz Age, which she directed and produced at the Playground Theatre in London. She's also a recipient of the Jewish National Fund's prestigious Tree of Life Award. And you know what, folks? That's just the short list. <laughs> Let's welcome Jenna Robbins live and direct from New York City, just across the hall from her lovely mother, to our show right now. Welcome, Jenna. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> As you said, and you've uh, already talked in your introduction, uh, somehow I got the memo. Who knew? Look that at the cookie. You see that, everybody? Tonight. Look at the color scheme here. Do you see something? We I both think it's have pretty the, nice. We've got pretty sort nice. of this turtleneckish red. It even goes with the uh, uh, the uh, lanterns right now. Uh, very cute. Very thank, cute. Thank you very much, Sean. This is a high class <laughs> production, and of course, we uh, always toast our viewers and we toast our guests as well. <laughs> I wish I'd known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you're holding your hand, it looks like you have something. So it's like. There you go. There you Cheers. go. Cheers. So Cheers. You. To you. Mm. What is so, that, Jim? You know what it is? It's just green tea. <laughs> oh, okay. well, I love the glass. I'm a it's, dirty martini girl. Oh, yeah. On the weekends, with the weekend shows, we sort of zip it up a little bit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I showed you this earlier, but uh, my partner in crime, as always, is George Burns. So he's joining us and sends his regards to you and to your mom as well. Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. We love George. So uh, how are you? Um, I, I love the background. I love Thank where you. you're located there. And I mentioned that your mom, of course, is right there and you're you're caring for her. And we say hello to her as well. And that's a very so beautiful much. thing. Thank that's a beautiful, you. Yeah. I'm very, very lucky. How many people can say that they've had this amount of time with their mother? You know, she'll be 99, May 16th. And it is, uh, it's been uh, a real gift that she, we've been able to spend. 99 on May 16th. Wow. Lucky 99. That is, that's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I just want to show you some of the levity coming your way. Um, I mentioned to uh, Jana all about levity and she likes the levity concept. And she, yeah. much said, she said, bring it on. So here it comes, Jana. Mm -hmm. Welcome to uh, Gym Master Show Live. You're now a levity. 
Cheers. We're happy you could be joining us this evening. Um, And Karen says Haley, and she has kisses there. And uh, and that's for Haley Swindle. Hi to Jana and Jana's mom. Very sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we already mentioned Haley in, the, in my bio. Uh, Haley is, is uh, not only d- does my duo show with me, we, we just move on, which sold out at uh, 54 below uh, many, many times before we had, of course, the pandemic. But Haley and I have been lucky enough to perform it too, virtually. Uh, we filmed it and uh, it really got to show pretty much worldwide, whereas when we did it in town, not the same as being live. And she will tell you that if you have her on your show as uh, as your That'd guest. Be great, yeah. That was not the same as live, but it was really wonderful. So many people, you know, have gone on to do their, their cabaret shows or their uh, other kinds of shows, you know, one person shows and you're out there by yourself. But what was really wonderful for us is that even though there was no audience, we had each other. So uh, that right. worked really beautifully. And Haley is also a producer on, a uh, producing partner of mine on a number of the things that you mentioned. That is fantastic. That's wonderful. So welcome, Haley. It's good to have you here. Mary Bishop says, welcome to Jenna and Jenna's uh, mom. What's your mom's name? My mother's name is Edith. And I'm sure she is just Thrilled, she's off in her own room watching. Well, oh, Edith, this room. Here's a kiss oh, for sorry. Edith. <laughs> for Edith, <laughs> and sweet. Mary's in Pine Island, Florida, and she sends her love as well. And Jill Jason says, "Welcome, Jenna. She's here as Thank well." Thank you, Jill. Crystal Nolan in Connecticut. Uh, hi, Jenna. Welcome to Lovety Hall. Kathleen Walker in New York City. Hi, Jenna. Welcome. Enjoy the lovity. Willie, where it's already, oh, 1.30 a.m. almost in Holland. She never oh misses my. the show. Welcome, Jenna, to the Gym Master Show, the best show in the world. She sends hearts, and she says, you are now a lovity. I you know, always was, but now it's official. <laughs> yeah, now it is official. And David says, Jenna is wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you, David. And Anne in uh, Florida and Wozniak says, welcome, Jenna and Jenna's mom. Looking forward to an exciting evening with you. Juanita in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Jenna. All this lovely coming your way, I think, is is absolutely beautiful. Karen says, uh, we just move on. Uh, it's fantastic. Jenna and Haley are dynamic powerhouse duo. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we got kisses coming in here for Jana's mom and for Jim's mom. Our moms accept. <laughs> What's your mom's name, Jim? Helen. Helen. Yeah. And she's uh, watching as well. We love her too. Uh, hi, Edith. Welcome to Lovety Hall from Crystal Nolan. And uh, you got hearts coming in from Haley. Rodney Rowe is here. Hello to Jana and her mom. Oh my goodness. From, from the Iowa. Here. Well, that wasn't in my bio. Rodney, thank you so much. I was also the artistic director uh, of the Okaboji Summer Theater, which is owned and operated by the college I graduated from with my Bachelor of Fine Arts, which is Stevens College, a women's college in Columbia, Missouri. And uh, I was their art, a guest artistic director. Uh, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening, Jana, my friend. Hello to your lovely mom as well. I've never seen a chat on the main screen like this. You know, it's very funny that uh, hi, June, and hi to you. To June. um, In most other uh, shows that I'm aware of, the chat is over on the side. You don't really see it if you go out of your way to try it. And I've mentioned to people that I normally didn't. I I really wanted to be focused on who I was talking to, you know. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's uh, something unique that we do on this show because I'm very viewer centric, and it is off on the side. But because I think of working for years in television, I can see seven things going on all at the same time. So I can see it on the side. I can see all the greetings on the screen, acknowledge them, and chat with you all at the same time. But I can't do that while drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more coming in. Mona in Louisiana says, hello, Jim, and welcome. Jana to Lovety Hall. Hello, Loveties. And Jill welcomes uh, your mom as well and my mom. I think that's beautiful. Kathy in uh, Cleveland welcomes you to the show as well. Merlin, who's in Interkip, Ontario, Canada. Hi, Jim and Jenna and all the Loveties. Uh, they all greet each other too. We've got a beautiful, beautiful community here. And uh, 
with my work in television radio, we're very uh, interactive with viewers. So we sort of transferred that here to the show and get a chance to see all the love coming your way, Jana, mm -hmm. which I think is really, really a beautiful thing. Yeah. So how have you been during all of the craziness? Uh, it's now a year or so since things closed, things paused a little bit. Um, People have had to pivot, you know, not just in their careers, but in their lives. Um, what are some things that you've been doing? And, and you had quite a few things that were, you know, in production, ready to go back in March, April, right? It was, it was really, it was really, of course, like for everyone, Jim, an, an enormous, an enormous challenge. Yeah. Uh, the truth of the matter was uh, at that moment in time, um, we had already closed Fiddler on the Roof off Broadway uh, uh, prior to the pandemic on February 9th, but we were supposed to go, believe it or not, uh, to China. They had bought the whole show and, it, mm. and they were paying lots of money for it and we were picking up and flying the entire production. <laughs> I can see what somebody just wrote, Mona Kent, uh, so long since I did that in that yes, show. Yes. Eh? Uh, um, that's funny. Um, we were going to take the whole uh, production to China uh, for five weeks and they kept negotiating with us. And then all of a sudden negotiations would stop and then they were back and they were negotiating and the negotiations would stop. And we had, you know, the cast's availability and planes and airfare. I mean, there was so much going into it. Uh, and it was what we were planning actually when we stopped because we had that show and we were going to China very soon. Um, well, all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden it was canceled. And all of this is going on before anybody's heard anything. We, we don't even know that there's a coronavirus. So when that first happened, you know, we all thought, oh, aren't we lucky? We, you know, we dodged a bullet there. We're not going. Uh, uh, and thank God we didn't go to China, right? Yes, right. Well, it was, it was really right after that, that uh, um, we were also going to be going to Australia. We were opening up the show at the Sydney Opera House and it, in Melbourne. And then the national tour was starting at the amazing Amundsen Theatre in yes. Los Angeles. So I was going to be traveling all of those places this year as the lead producer of the show. And none of that happened. It all got canceled. Mm. And then on top of that, a company, which I'm in no way a lead producer, I'm just a co-producer on the show, was in rehearsal already in previews. And then that stopped. Uh, and that's on hold. I do know it's company. coming. Back. Yeah. There yeah. we are. Company phone yeah. rings, door chimes, in comes company. And uh, and then one afternoon, speaking of Haley Swindle again, we were in rehearsal because we were taking our show out to a place called the Tillis Center on Long Island. That and is my alma mater. Oh, you're kidding. LIU, beautiful campus there. Oh, in Brooklyn, wow. Huh? Well, LIU. I never had yeah. the honor of playing there, but it looked like a gorgeous venue. We're still hoping to go back. Yeah. And so we were going to do our show there. And we were literally in rehearsal when certain things were coming at us that afternoon about things closing, Broadway hadn't closed. I and mean, remember this is March 11th and we were um, in rehearsal and I remember saying something's going on. I think this is not looking good. You know, I don't, I don't believe we stopped early, but it was that day that we got the announcement that they were closing Broadway. It was the last yeah. time we were out and pre preparing for something at that time. What was that feeling like for for you? Was it a pit of the stomach feeling something you, the only time you ever hear things like that is maybe when uh, there's some, a storm or, or they're paying homage and dimming lights or, or things like that. But for an indefinite situation like that. Um, it wasn't, I, I, I mean, I'm answering you before you're finished. Ask. It wasn't. And so many things horrible, you know, a philosophy. Let's talk about levity. Let's talk about levity, right? Arts. Let's let's talk about that. Most of the really horrible things in our life that we worry about might happen to us. We're usually lucky enough that those things don't happen. The ones we think about that they might happen. Oh my God, what if? Oh my God, what if? Right? Yeah. And we use that kind of energy to be worried about. The truth of the matter is, most of these kind of things, and. Um, I'm, I'm stopped because of um, one of our viewers mm -hmm. who um, was in the hospital with COVID and lost her husband is watching us. And it's, um, 
to think about what people went through. What I was trying to share is we didn't know it. What happened is we all got through it because back then we didn't know it. When um, that we thought Broadway was closing for two weeks. Well, we can do two weeks. We can do, we can step up to the challenge of what we're, you know, and then it became something else and more and more. I can remember being here in this apartment and not leaving it for five months, not allowing an aide to come in to take care of my mother, not going grocery shopping, uh, having things delivered to the door. I'm sure everybody that's watching, we were, we didn't know where it was coming from, right? So if, if, if groceries were delivered, we were washing down the groceries I was covering. I mean, we lived through something unimaginable, something that I actually never could worry about because it wasn't even a thought. I, I always thought that I was living in a world, uh, Jim, that was um, getting better and better. Yeah. When I grew up, and I'm not going to say the dates, but anybody can look it up. And when <laughs> I grew up, you know, we, we were living through the free love era. We were living through that we were going to end world hunger. We were living through kumbaya. Everybody was going to love everybody. And I had an expectation that the world was actually, as it grew and it educated itself, that it was going to grow into a levity situation yeah. right. and that we would not be faced with um, the hate and the anger um, and disenfranchisement, and I can go on and on, or viruses that are killing us. I, I didn't see it coming. And I yeah. think, you know, we, what we find is when these sort of things do happen, that the truth is we're up for the challenge. That, yes. you know, you take it day to day and um, we get through what we need to get through. Exactly. The, the, uh, what people have gone through uh, is greater than some of the other things that we all worry so much about, which are- that we so, might have to go through. Right, that we might have to go through. And uh, I've said it multiple times on this series, I've said I think might have what might have happened was um, it was the meeting of the minds of three major energies. I think a divine mother nature and the planet came together back in the spring and said, yeah, this isn't going very well. Something enough. enough. We gave you life. We gave you all the resources imaginable in this beautiful planet and with road rage and shootings and divisiveness and everything you're going in the wrong direction. So divine planet earth, mother nature, all in charge came together and said, stop, and the beginning of the new decade, 2020, which sounds really nice and hopeful. It's the start. It even sounds great, 2020. We'll throw in a health scare, but we'll, we won't do it just a regional. We'll do a global pandemic. Then it'll affect the economy. Then we'll have civil unrest. And then we'll have political craziness. And we're going to do it all within a year's time to see how you humans, it's not going to affect the animals. It's not going to affect the trees or the oceans or, or any of that. It's going to affect the humans. And we want to see how you come out of it. And we've seen the best of the best. We've seen some of the worst of the worst. Uh, but I hope we come out of it more loving and more empathetic and more unified. Well, um, that would be an ultimate thing. And I think wouldn't there's- Wouldn't that be a goal? Wouldn't that be the best thing to happen? And you know, when, uh, when and, and, and certainly when it first happened, I held on to that a great deal. That is before the civil unrest and before the political oh, unrest. Yeah. Oh, a number of other things added on, but it's absolutely what I felt that the world actually needed to wake up. And this was a big, you know, wake up call. When you think about the theater being as, as closed down as, as long as it has been, you know, I don't think any of us saw that. And it's been no. a bigger challenge, you know, I think for younger people, who are, have just gone into the business, who were in running Broadway shows, uh, students graduating and seeing their life in front of them, you know, from that point of view, to some degree, I feel, um, you know, how like when something bad happens to somebody and you go, you know, why was this better for me? I'm a little embarrassed by that, or I feel a little bad about that because the truth is, you know, I have had an, uh, a highly satisfying career to be able to do what it is I love 
and to get up every day and do it, whether I'm on stage or whether I'm directing or whether I'm producing, to be a part of creating something that I love is a gift to me. And to have done it for as long as I've done it, I'm at the place in my life that quite honestly, everything I do now is out of love because I'm collecting all of my pensions. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing anything I'm really doing because I need the, the paycheck. Of course, we all need the paycheck. I'm not saying I'm independently wealthy, <laughs> but, but it, it's, it's out of wanting to, to, to give and be involved in creatively. You know, my company right now is called Jana Robbins Productions. And speaking of Haley Swindle, so now you see you have to have her on. We yes, did a new, awesome. new uh, uh, production company called Pinnacle Productions, and we chose that name very, very carefully because we really do hope that, that it reaches the pinnacle of the type of, of theatrical things that we can put on stage that will change people's lives and inspire others. Uh, when I first went into producing, I had developed my company uh, and at the time it was called Better World Productions. And it was because I wanted to present theater that not only educated and enter entertained us, but inspired us to create a better world. So it's mm -hmm. always been about the subject that you and I just happened you know, yeah. to be talking about now. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. I think uh, the theater is going to come back gangbusters. I think that when we do come back, the, uh, the world will come back better. And hopefully, you know, we will have um, a renaissance because everybody is missing entertainment and what the theater and what the arts bring into our lives. And just like we had the roaring 20s after, you know, the, the First World War and the devastation of that, I, I believe we're going to have the um, you know, kind of like the jazz age of the 2020s. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, a lot of people are, they're ready for it. You know, when it's safe, ready to go, they're ready to get there. And I tell you, this also has been a pause for people to realize the importance of the arts in our lives. And a lot of people have also been hearkening back to nostalgia, watching classic movies, classic television, listening to, you know, uh, music of the past and, and surrounding themselves with some of those Comforts. I've been telling people off air, on air, whether it's this show, my professional work, um, to surround yourself during times like this in your life where it seems like you can't predict tomorrow at all and, and the rug is being pulled underneath you and there's nowhere to turn where anything is familiar. Surround yourselves with the constants in life. So if you have access to an ocean, go to the ocean. It's larger than you. It's been around a thousand years. It's going to be around a thousand years after. And there's that flow and beautiful tide coming in and out, the rhythm of life, the rhythm of the spin of the earth that is just there. Same thing with going out into a forest or going to a you know beautiful flower garden, uh, going out in nature. Those things are still happening right now. The sun is rising. The sun is setting. That's happening regardless of what we're all experiencing. Right. So when it seems like nothing is familiar, go to the constants, go to the familiar. Uh, gardening last summer was the number one hobby for everybody because they can get into the soil and they can plant something and nurture it. And that pays dividends at the end. And they have some sense of like a control of being able to nurture that plant um, we need to do that for one another as well. So go to the constants, the forest, the ocean, whatever it is, and surround yourself with that warmth. Uh, and the arts provide that big time as well. Well, I think that's really a great suggestion because most of the time we were discussing, as I, I've been in New York City, where most everything is shut down, yeah. restaurants closed, no theater in my apartment, not leaving the apartment, you know. But as the time, certainly I did uh, a lot of things anyway. I mean, when you're in pre-production and you're developing things, you're still taking your meetings, you're still having your conversations, you're still moving forward on those things that are going to be ready to go when the theater is ready to come back. So you know, none of that, none of that stopped. And what you're talking about is interesting because I've always cooked uh, but I've never thought of myself as a gourmet cook. As a matter of fact, I'm divorced, but during my marriage, you know, I was on stage a lot raising my son and I would always, you know, uh, come home at the end of a day from whatever my auditions, everything I was, get a dinner every single night on the table at six, 
6.30 and back out the door at 7.15 or set, you know, to be uh, at the theater for half hour at 7.30. And my ex-husband said to me, you, you should write a cookbook. You're the only person I know that can put like a delicious dinner on the table every single night in about 25 minutes. And I really did, but it had me stick to the same recipes again and again and again. You know, my go-to of, of, of sauteing the fish, cooking the steak, you know, having the chicken breast, putting out. Well, recently, because I'm here uh, uh, and spend a lot of time in the house and because of my mother, we've spoken about this here with me, as we came toward the holidays this time, uh, and everybody was celebrating Easter and talking about what they were cooking and and uh, we were celebrating Passover, I decided to go back into the family cookbooks. And like I made a couple things my grandmother made that I've actually never cooked in my life. What you did know? you make? This is a oh, foodie, a, a, it's a, 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 a foodie a, crowd here, I foodie audience. A, a potato kugel, but it wasn't, it was a, if somebody else is gonna know what the, what the Jewish name for it is. It's, it's a noodle raisin noodle pudding. Uh, but it's it's really more of a pasta dish because of the noodles and and it's a little bit like cheesecake. It's got cinnamon. You know, I I can't tell Sounds you how good. proud I was of of making that dish, and I served it with her recipe for brisket, and mm -hmm. and there was such a sense one of accomplishment of cooking with love and of creating something exciting because we're not going out to restaurants and we're not. So to put something on the table that, you know, that dated back to my grandparents was a very um, sentimentally fulfilling experience. Uh, and it uh, sort of brings back the uh, family traditions and harkens back to uh, mm -hmm. ancestral and just, and again, it's grounding. It, it's even something as, as uh, what may seem simple as a family passed down recipe of a, a dish like that can really give you this feeling of being connected and threaded just by something yeah. like preparing something like that. And that's amazing, isn't it? It, it, you know, really is. It, it makes me, without you even asking me a question, and please do, because I can talk. Um, <laughs> it's um, Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish. Yes. Never saw it coming. You know, when people talk about, well, what did you do to create that? What did you do? You know, all my life, what I did is I followed my passion. All my life, I, I, never, I never veered from the theater and my communicating with people and or inspiring people or entertaining people with theater, I've never veered off that path. And uh, that at one point in my career, um, I've told this story to intimate friends, never really on the uh, anything as national as this or international as this. Um, when I was in Gypsy and I was standing by for Time Daily as Mama Rose, I um, I really saw the glass as half full at that point in time, which was why did Time Daily get to be the star? You know, B.B. Newworth, uh, um, who, who I know, and uh, had gone off, you know, left the theater and got her TV series and then came back to Broadway a star. And I can name the people where their TV series and their film careers catapulted them. Well, I went to California to get a TV series. I got two TV series. Neither one was picked up by the networks. And uh, there I was two years later, you know, sitting out there thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'd come out so that I could go back to New York and have a TV series. And I decided at that point in time that I had better get back to New York before New York said, Jenna Robbins, who? Right. But while I was out there, I started producing. And I started doing all this producing. And that's when I realized that quite honestly, I was getting, a. it was very fulfilling because it was it was not just about me anymore. Right. It was actually about everybody else. I was creating all these jobs for other people. I was creating shows that lived on without me. I was creating shows, and I'll get back to Fiddler in a minute, that were at the theater entertaining hundreds and thousands of people per night while I'm home doing something else. I didn't yeah. even have to be there at that point, but what I had created was living far beyond myself. Absolutely. So as I kept doing those things, truly, 
um, Fiddler on the Roof came to me. I was asked to be on the board down at the uh, National Yiddish Theater uh, because uh, uh, a man named Chris Massamine was CEO at the time. He knew me through other organizations. He asked if I'd be on the uh, advising artistic uh, board along with some other very wonderful uh, producing names on, on Broadway like Daryl Roth and Manny Eisenberg and I could go on and I thought, you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> I am asking you. Yes. And I, well, another philosophy I have, step up to the plate, Janet. Mm -hmm. Step up to the plate. Right. So I, I was simply on the advisory board when he came and said, you know, what do you think about um, uh, Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish, directed by Joel Gray? Now, I'd done Pal Joey with Joel Gray. Oh, yeah. Years ago as a performer, I'd worked with him, and he's amazingly talented. Didn't know oh, his yeah as a director at the time. And I also thought, who needs another fiddler on the roof? It was just on Broadway for the third revival. Every, every high school and, and summer camp has done it. <laughs> who needs, and in Yiddish, five minutes into the, thank you, five minutes into that, um, Mm. That conversation about what it would mean to have the people speaking the real language that would have been spoken, mm. it, it, it no longer felt like it was a Broadway musical at all. It was like you were watching what really happened. You saw the people having the life experience, and it was life-changing. And the English subtitles, or we called them super titles, uh, you know, scroll. And everybody was familiar with the show. It was such an unlikely hit, and it changed people's lives. It really did. Mm. What was that sensation like for you being so involved in uh, that production? It must have been extraordinary. It, it, it was. I, it, yeah. it would be hardly, it, it's almost impossible to, um, put in words. to put into words because, again, I have to say that I'd love to take credit as the producer for what was on that stage. Yeah. I really had nothing to do with it other than I thought it was a great idea. They did it. Joel did it. A wonder choreo wonderful choreographer, Stas. Um, I came down and saw it and went. Yeah. But what I did, so sometimes that's all you have to do, is I recognized and I, that it was worthy. So and you believed uh, in it. You believed I just, in it. Yeah, people said to me, why did you do Fiddler on the Roof in, in Yiddish? I mean, and I said, it's as simple as this. I had to. Yeah. No doubt in my mind that when I saw this, it had to be done and it had to be transferred. Yeah. And, and we managed and pulled in really wonderful supportive partners and, and people that believed in the show too. The only theater that it can possibly go to without trying to put it on Broadway because I thought it'll never compete against, you know, a, a, a Hamilton and we'll never be able to raise that kind of money. It doesn't have any fireworks and it doesn't have any, you know, it, it, it was the simplicity. It was the heart and the soul of, of the show. So it really, and, and other off-Broadway theaters would have been too small. The right theater opened up when we were ready. It was the parting, you know, of the Red Sea. Yeah, it Moses, was the yeah. Theater. The show that was there closed. It was one seat shy of a Broadway house. So it was an off-Broadway contract, which made everything less expensive. The unions, paying the actors, the advertising, everything came in less expensive so that we could literally make the money work for the show to work. And it was beshared. And not only did it work, but again, uh, everybody fell in love with it, you know? Congratulations, Drama Desk Award, Best Musical Revival. That's extraordinary. And that's that, that's just the gravy, not why things are done. It's just really the, uh, the gravy. We have another one here that I referenced when I did the introduction. Tell us about this one here, the jazz. Uh, well, you heard me... Uh, you heard me mention that I think that we'll have the Roaring Twenties and the Jazz Age. Yes. Haley Swindle is a co-producer of mine on this show, along with Greg Hafner and Sherry Wright. Um, the show uh, began here 
uh, in, uh, in New York a number of years ago, actually at 59 East 59th Street. Uh, it got uh, wonderful reviews, just didn't have the legs at that moment in time to move directly to Broadway. And since then, we've like developed it even more and gotten picked up. I mean, it is about Zelda, Scott Fitzgerald uh, and Hemingway. It's about their, uh, their passion for writing. Uh, it takes place in the 20s. We all know about Zelda. Zelda was kind of the, the fuel for Fitzgerald's and even for Hemingway, there is a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, why can't I think of the name of it? Because I haven't talked about this in a while. A Movable Feast. There's a book called A Movable Feast that has uh, an amazing uh, uh, interaction that happened for real. And I'm not going to, I think I can't talk about it tonight. People are going to have to come see the jazz age. Come see but it, yeah. There was a very, very close relationship between Hemingway and Fitzgerald. And, and you know that all of their lives ended up tragically. You know, yeah. they lived on the edge. You know, they, 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 uh, that's what they wanted to do. They burned themselves out really in life. But the show itself um, does it's not a musical. It's a play with music, but but it really takes place and moves out of the jazz club, almost like uh, Man of La Mancha, which I did when I was much younger. Uh, um, I was Aldonza on the national tour when I was 21 with Jose Ferrer, and it all comes out of the prison and and Quixote, uh, you know, telling the story. Uh, uh, Savant, I don't actually mean Quixote, I mean uh, Cervantes telling the story of Don Quixote and the whole show comes alive. And this kind of does that and the music and the jazz band is there and there is dance and there is sex and there is passion. And we did it, a, uh, um, a final uh, developmental production in London once again, yeah. just before the pandemic. Mm. Just and before. so the next step that was going to happen in London, I didn't even get to talk about that, uh, has not transpired other as well. I mean. uh, is that on hold to ha to happen eventually? Is that the hope? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's that's good news. So some good news uh, breaking for everybody watching right now uh, with any concern in that direction. Um, what was one of your very first performance opportunities in your career? One of those door opening opportunities. I know that you performed, was it Gypsy? You performed at the Jones Beach Theater on Long Island, didn't you? Well, no, I did Gypsy on Broadway. Broadway I don't know yeah. that you got all the uh, video clips that I sent your direction. That's what I was wondering about. And if not, then I'll just have to come back uh, because I sent you a video clip of me doing Rose's Turn. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but you are going to talk about that wasn't Gypsy, that was South Pacific. South Pacific <laughs> was Jones Beach. You're yeah. good. You're good. Right. And I was, uh, it was uh, actually the first audition um, uh, basically that I ever had in New York City. And uh, I, I remember full well being something like number 628 to be allowed to sing 16 bars of music. And I was singing uh, much more from the Fantastics, which was a big hit for many, many years, but it was just out at that point. And uh, you got to sing your 16 bars and they would just say, thank you, thank you. Or they'd say, thank you, see the man at the door. And I was uh, I was right after the Jones Beach Marine Theater where I got my equity card. That's another st uh, um, story. Hey, let me Let me do this. It's the same story and I'm sorry. It's so long ago, Jim. You were asking me, you were asking me about nine. It's like 52 years ago or something, huh? 59, I think is the year that that show happened. So I, yeah, I'm telling it, but so. And you're doing a beautiful job. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So I was like number, as I said, 628, that's 16 bars. And then they narrowed that down and we, we got a call back. And with the call back, uh, you got to sing the same 16 bars. Uh, and then uh, they narrowed it down to about 30 girls and we got to sing a whole song. Mm. And it was the first time in my life that I'd ever gotten to sing a whole song in New York City. And there we were dressed in our dresses. We dressed up and we had to wear a swimming suit uh, uh, because it was going to be um, South Pacific. 
And in the room was, um, oh no, here we go with names. Help me, Jim, who, who wrote it. Um, Haley, I wish you could talk right now. Yeah, Haley, if you want to chime in. Composer. <laughs> Anybody that's on right now. Richard Rogers, thank you. I got Richard it out. Rogers. Richard Rogers was in the room and, and um, they hired three girls. And I got uh, the job. And uh, uh, it was before uh, before my twenty first birthday. Mm. This was the big, and it, and uh, it starred, believe it or not, Jerome Hines uh, from the Metropolitan Opera. And my second job, big job, was right after I did the national tour of Man of La Mancha. Also in in sixty nine, I came back, and the Paper Mill Playhouse offered me Aldonza opposite. Mm. So I went from a chorus girl and in, in um, South Pacific to playing Aldonza opposite the same person, Jerome Hines at the paper mill playhouse. Mm. That was pretty exciting. I got pregnant with my son that year too. Did you really? Yeah. I used to tell people you'd have to do the rape ballet eight <laughs> times a week. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> We actually do. We're going to bring it up here. Uh, we do have a video clip that we definitely want to show. And this oh. one is Rose's turn, Gypsy, when again you were on Broadway. South Pacific was Jones Beach. And of course, Broadway was Gypsy. And uh, we've got a clip right here. Uh, did you want to preface it or share anything? Uh, I think almost anybody knows Rose's turn. What has mm. happened is that Rose has come out of of Gypsy's uh, dressing room, you know, and Gyps and Gypsy's now the star, and she she is kicking her mother out of her dressing room, and Rose walks out on the stage right after a very very a dramatic scene where she has spent her life, you know, putting her heart and soul into making her daughter a star, and this is how she is being treated now. All right, here we go, Jenna Robbins, Rose's turn, and Gypsy by Stephen Stonheim and of course, Jules Stein. Here we go.
What was so that? Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. There's no way we couldn't have uh, shared that with our audience. And uh, now I think you said you're going to uh, reenact that in your living room right now, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not enough space. Not enough space. Uh, yeah. uh, what was that like for you? What was that feeling like? If you could even put it in words, I mean, and, and bravo, 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 of course. <laughs> well, you know, I'm really happy that the audience did that because it's kind of built into the show. Um, it's, uh, you know, even that ending toward the end, it, it, the she's imagining it in her mind, of course, and so there's no real audience there. But it's uh, it's the most one of the most amazing roles I've ever had the opportunity to play in my life. Uh, one of the most amazing numbers I've ever had to play. I think that uh, that Rose, uh, you know, just had such a desire to make her girls a star. She just didn't realize that. Uh, uh, what she was actually doing wrong and pushing and shoving and working so hard. But I, uh, I loved playing her in a way where I wanted the audience to, to like her so much that all they really wanted to do is put their arms around her and say, Hey, Rose, come here. Let, let, yeah. let, let me talk to you about what's happening right. with the girls, you know, right. but it too was a real show business story for me because my mother used to dance, take uh, dance lessons with Jean Kelly. Oh, and my mother had a personal relationship with Jean Kelly mm -hmm. and had always wanted to uh, to go into show, show business. But uh, she had met my uh, father when they were 14 years old and um, they married at 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother uh, sent me off to dancing school when I was four. 
And so I never wanted to do another thing. Now, my mother wasn't Mama Rose. My mother was a very, is. <laughs> is. <nobody>. Hi, Mom. <laughs> is a very loving and very supportive human being and, and always wanted me to have the chance that she had never had. So she was really there for me. So um, I was, I was, playing my mother, but I'd also played Gypsy. I played Gypsy with Dolores Gray at, as Mama at the Paper Mill Playhouse, and I won an award for that. So I've now played Mazeppa. I've played almost every role there is in Gypsy, except the men's roles. I've never played Herbie, but I did Mazeppa with the trumpet while I was covering Tyne Daly on Broadway. And uh, But really, it felt like a life story to me. My sister and myself, I have a sister, Deborah, uh, my mother wanting to be in show business, but pushing me to be the one to be there. And so when I sang that song, I was indeed Edith, Edith Eisenberg saying, I could have been better than any of you. If I would gotten that break, I could have done this too. And I know that about my mother. So the fact that your mother has been along for this beautiful ride all these years, um, what has that been like for your mother to see all of these incredible accomplishments and experiences that you have been able to present for all of us? Well, not now that you all only have to have Haley on the show, you'll have to have my mother. Your mother, because <laughs> not everybody gets a chance to have their mother still with them, to be with them through all of these incredible the ups, the downs, the, the all of it, and right there by your side and rooting for you, that's got to be a blessing and a joy. Everything that happens, Jim, it, that's exactly how I feel. And every next thing that's there, mom, mom, you got to come to the opening of Fiddler. Mom, you got to see Haley and I do this this nightclub show together. You know, mom, this is going to happen. You know, uh, um there are some amazing upcoming things that are going to happen that are going to be announced very, very soon in production. And, uh, you know, my mother, God willing, is planning to be there still for all of it. And I bet many times she has said to you, uh, which I've heard from my folks, you know, you, you've done good, kiddo, <laughs> which is a beautiful <laughs> thing. It's a beautiful thing when you hear that from those it who. Truly uh, is. It is family and rooting for you. Uh, we actually have another clip here that we'd love to share. And this goes back to uh, Don't Tell Mama. Oh, uh, my. Your, yes, your performance at Don't Tell Mama. Did you uh, want to share that with us as well? Uh, I, I, know, yeah, I know what you're going to do. And and um, I'm still it, here. Yep, yeah, that's this the song one. has become kind of an alma mater. I first, first, John, I, talk. I first did it in Side by Side by Sondheim out at Seattle Rep when I was still in my 40s. And everybody said to me, you're not old enough to sing that. And I thought, oh, come on, yes, I am. I've had a lot of life experience. So years later, when I started doing my uh, uh, solo club acts and before uh, Haley and I met doing this once for the girls together and put together our duo show. And by the way, the two of us on stage are better than either one of us alone. Um, I did a show called I'm Still Here, and uh, I love this song. Um, I, I reimagine the lyrics being somewhat changed, but the way I did it, and I still do do it, is uh, I'm now finally my age, although when I sang it before, I used to think of someone younger than my age now. <laughs> but I'm an older actress, and some kid in a bar says to me, wait a second, don't I know you? And she tells them the story. I love it. I just want to show you some of the incredible, before we go to that uh, clip, which we'll go to in a second, I just want to show you some of the wonderful words that are coming in here. Jill says, how wonderful that you get to share everything with your mom. David says, wow, Jenna, what an amazing life. You can do it all. Happy to know. And I've worked with you in Allentown. You really need to write a book. Edith, you raised a wonderful woman. Christine Clifton in North Carolina, just brilliant. Really a superb job, Jenna. And that, of course, was uh, the last clip we showed. Austin Field says, another great show. Marty Thompson in Nashville, by way, originally of Australia, 
says, nailed it. Uh, what a wonderful clip that is from Merlin in Canada. Haley says, wow. June says, wow. Jill says, fantastic. Marty says, super number. Anne in Florida, she says, fantastic. Mary says, fabulous. Standing ovation from Linda O'Dell in St. Augustine, Florida. Brilliant from South Africa and Juanita. And Karen says, powerful. Jenna, uh, wow, how lucky to have this clip. Just some of the Gym Master yeah, Show lovely. That that's kind of bootlegged, which is why it looked and sounded. <laughs> <laughs> and Merlin says bravo. And, <laughs> and uh, absolutely amazing. Love the singing and dancing. Uh, so, well, here's some more for you. I'm still standing. We're talking about. Uh, I'm still here. You're still here yeah. and we're still standing. <laughs> Thank I'm still standing um, from uh, Don't Tell Mama and another brilliant performance uh, for everybody watching us here on the Jim Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Here we go. Enjoy. <laughs> Good times and fun times. Good times, my dear. I'm still here. Flush velvet sometimes. Sometimes just pretzels and beer. But I'm here. I'll stuff the dailies in my shoes. Strung the ladies and I've sung the blues. Seen all my dreams disappear. But I'm here. I've slept in shanties, guest of the WPA. But I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Danced in my scanties, three bucks a night was a pay, but I'm here. I stood in red lines with the best, watched while the headlines did the rest. In the depression, was I depressed? Nowhere near. I met a big financier, so I'm not here. I've been through Candy, Wally, and Windsor's affair. And I'm here, Amos and Andy, Mahjong and Platinum Hair, and I'm here, I've been through Amy's Irish Rose, find your babies, major bubbles, and heebie-jeebies for our babies, bathysphere. I've been through Shirley Temple and I'm here. I've been through Robert and Jay and Gary. Gee, that was fun enough. When you've been through Herbert and Jay and Gary. Anything else is a laugh. Oh. <sighs> mm. I've been through Reno. I've been through Beverly Hills, literally. And I'm here. Aretha's and Fino. Rescures religion and bills, but I'm here. Been called a pinko, call me tool. Got through a stinko by my board. I should have gone to an acting school, that seems clear. Still, some. 
someone said she's a singer. I'm a black disabled one day, next day it goes in the heart. I'm here. Top billing Monday, Tuesday, your touring in stock. I'm here. First, you're another slow eyed fam. Then, someone's mother, and I am. Then, your care. Then, you career. From career to career. I'm almost through my memoirs, and I'm in my head. very nice it's and you a whole different meaning right now doesn't it <laughs> i'm still i got through all of last year and they're still here and i'm still here you were yeah. uh you were singing along a little bit to that weren't you i was seeing in the little screen i said she's reliving that moment she's mouthing the words she's singing along <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was enjoying it yes of I course something i don't enjoy so i, mean, I wouldn't let you do it or screen it <laughs> <laughs> we have also some really fantastic photos through the years as well and here's a very special one you and uh hillary rodham clinton tell us about this uh, special moment right before we closed about one week before we closed uh, off broadway hillary clinton came to see fiddler on the roof in mm. the and I cannot tell you how honored I was yeah. to be able to take this picture with her to the side of the stage of the performance. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's one you'll cherish. Here's another photo here too. That's closing night. That's closing night. Uh, walking out on stage, waving goodbye to uh, to all of the audience. Mm. Yeah, very special moment. And uh, we have another photo here that's terrific. Tell us about this one here. Well, this is picking up the Drama Desk Award for the show. Yeah. Uh, uh, Fiddler on the Roof won every uh, award he could possibly win. You know, as I said to you earlier, uh, yeah. uh, that is my producing partner, Hal Luftig, with me. Uh, couldn't have done it without him, for sure. Uh, I'm wearing the famous Oyve pin, which I wore every single day for the entire run of the show. Um, I think that was given to me as a gift. They're going to get tired of hearing your name, Haley, by Haley. <laughs> <laughs> and I cherished it forever. And um, this was really special because everybody said, uh, you know, if you'd gone to, to, to New York, you would have won the uh, Tony Award for Best Revival. <clears throat> 
I totally believe we certainly would have won uh, um, over Oklahoma that year and that hour. Tevia, Stephen Skybell is the best Tevia there has ever, ever been. And he too would have won the Tony. But the truth of the matter is that's just not where the show belonged. So it won every award it could possibly win. Yeah. Off Broadway. Congratulations. There's another wonderful photo here. That's the producers of one of the first, uh, second shows I did on Broadway. A wonderful group of of, of people here. Jamie uh, DeRoy, who was a guest on our show, I see too. Was? Jamie, Jamie DeRoy. Jamie is DeRoy the is there. Uh, yes. Um, lead producer was Kevin McCollum in the, in the center. Uh, this was uh, for our Tony nomination. We all had our pictures taken. We were nominated for the Tony for Ragtime. What was that feeling like for you, Jenna? Every single one of these things um, is actually something very quietly fulfilling, Jim. Uh, you think about these big kind of awards. I, I, I feel the award is in the doingness of it. And I think I've said that kind of thing to you again and again tonight. To me, the award is that I get to do it, that I get to put my heart into these shows happening, whether I'm on stage performing them or I'm directing them or producing them. That's the important thing. So when the acknowledgement comes, you have a really great sense of pride, but it's really kind of a quiet sense of satisfaction because I do admit there truly is something wonderful about being acknowledged. And so many of us do things in life and actually never receive the acknowledgement that, that we want. So when I first started, and I won't name names, producing and directing, I produced and directed someone who I was also seeing at the time in a one man show who got a big award and never mentioned my name. And when I mentioned that he had never mentioned my name, he said to me, well, what did you want me to do? Say, thanks a lot. I couldn't have done it without you. I said, uh, actually, yeah, that's probably exactly that's what I kind good. of wanted, <laughs> wanted to hear, you know? So we crave, uh, I think we do crave at least acknowledgement. And this is, this is, you know, this is acknowledgement. And uh, it's, um, it's a wonderful feeling. Oh, absolutely. And well-deserved and, and well-earned. Here's another beautiful photo. That is opening night of the first show. I'm the one on the far right with the short hair. Yeah. I wore my hair like that a lot. Marion Ross in there? Uh, no, I know Isn't who you're looking at. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm sure she looks I'm like her, doesn't she? <laughs> well, I know who you are referring to, the redhead. Right that is Chase Mishkin. Okay, yeah. And the fellow in the center, uh, that is Randall Reggett. Randall Reggett was the first person ever who ever gave me an opportunity beca to become a producer mm. with billing on a Broadway show. He was a he has passed away much too young. Mm. He was 55 years old and he truly was my mentor uh, and a wonderful wonderful mm. friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I appreciated him so very, very much. Mm. So that's another sort of wonderful thing that happens is the opportunity to work with wonderful people uh, who mean a great deal over the years, and that's quite special. Here's another great photo here. <laughs> that's at the Broadway Alliance Awards. Uh, and, of course, we have the amazing Joel Gray. Joel Gray, uh, right front and center. With us. Yeah. Really, really nice. Uh, another, uh, you mentioned this a little bit in the introduction. Tell I us. did. Yes. I did. Um, this is another show in development. Uh, it's written by the same um, uh, writer um, of uh, the jazz age. And in fact, we began a long, long uh, relationship with one another uh, because he also, Alan Nee, he wrote uh, a Little Women, and that is when our relationship started. He said that when I walked in the room with a big smile, I would, I just was the best producer to ever work with. And I said, no, Alan, I wasn't the best producer. I was the nicest producer. The nicest. <laughs> um, and uh, I love this. Uh, this was our uh, logo for the uh, world premiere at the Hope Mill um, Playhouse. Uh, there was a circus 
aspect to it. It's kind of a, yes. a, a, a it hat, comes yeah. out of the characters of A Christmas Carol, but ultimately Timothy Cratchit runs away with the circus. Mm -hmm. And the top hat would be the top hat for both Scrooge and for, of course, the, um, the, the what's the person called? The um, ringmaster. The ringmaster at the circus. circus. Uh, that show is still in development. Uh, Haley is a producer on that show with me as well. And uh, we have wonderful plans for it. I got a chance actually once for a television station I was working with to work alongside the ringmaster and be ringmaster for the night and rode in. They, I was representing the television station. They asked me to ride in with the uh, top hat and tails on an elephant. But an elephant at a circus is a little bit different than on a horse. You're, you're, you're on the elephant and you're basically holding on to the flapping ears, trying to wave at all the kids. And it was a very interesting experience, but I could say that I was ringmaster. That's for, amazing. It was a, a wonderful experience, uh, something special. Here's another great photo. No, this is something else that's uh, not talked about as much, but the, I thank you for, for sharing it. And uh, am I having an opportunity to talk about it? This is a show after I did um, um, Little Women with Randall, uh, I then joined him as his only co-lead producer on uh, a show that was called The Great Game. And we had tried it out down at the Alliance Theater uh, at Duke University. Um, I'm sorry, I just, I just said a wrong name. We just, I've worked at the Alliance Theater too, but that's not it. We had done it at Duke University previews, Broadway previews at Duke, which is the same place that we had done Little Women. Mm -hmm. uh, when Randall passed away, I made myself a promise. I make lots of promises. And by the way, I keep them. It's important to me. Yes. And I made myself a promise that I was not going to allow the great game, which it was originally called, to die along with Randall. And we worked it and we worked it in readings and we workshopped it out at Cal State Fullerton. And uh, the name was changed at that point to actually through audiences suggestions because it is about the, the top of the Pamir Mountains at a time when uh, England and Russia were in a race to open up trade through the passes with India. Yeah. As an Indian leading lady, it's based on a true story. Although in the true story, uh, this explorer who was going through the passes to do that and was killed and beheaded in the passes never did meet an Indian lady spy, but we put her in there and we changed the, the name to Roof of the World. We did a world premiere directed by Eric Rosen, who was artistic director at the time at Kansas City Rep. Uh, Roof of the World has not had its next production. I really hope that it still will. I would say it is actually one of the reasons that I was taking um, the astonishing times of Timothy Cratchit and the Jazz Age over to uh, to London because I want and did company. I, uh, there was a reason I wanted to be on company uh, uh, with that group of uh, uh, people and Marianne Elliott, the director, because I really was hoping and, and still do to introduce Roof of the World to the London audiences where I think it will be even better received than here in the States. It's amazing how sometimes that happens too. You, you really never know until you try other places like London and the reception is, is quite different. Um, this really looks uh, amazing. This is something, hopefully uh, we'll all get a chance to see this as uh, well, so. time you know marches on here. I do hope um, so. Uh, what are some of the things that continue to bring you great blessing and joy in your life? When you look at this extraordinary career and you've done it all for the right reasons, the love of it, the joy of it, you're now at a point where you still love every second of it, but you're paying it forward. You're inspiring others. You're uplifting others. You've done that throughout your life and your career, but now there's more time in which to do that and still be busy with all of the incredible I mean, material that you're involved in. Um, when you look at this body of work, which again has brought such joy to so many people, um, tell us about some of those inspirations, blessings, and joys in your life that uh, have come along through the results as a result of all of this effort and this time and talent and blood, sweat, and tears and toil. 
to continue doing this and, and doing this yeah. for the good of all of us. You've just, you've just given me the opportunity to share that with you throughout your entire show. You know, there's, there's. I appreciate I, that. And I thank you. You know, I say I love to talk. When you asked me that at this moment, I almost have no words left because I said that what it has given me yeah. is a life and a career that I love, that expresses who I am. And for me to be able to use who I am to make a difference in the world, and I love being on stage. That's what you were saying. Of course, I like producing and directing, but being on stage and giving all of yourself in the moment, your God-given talent, uh, uh, the, uh, the expression of your emotions, singing lessons, paying off uh, your relationship with your mother right there on the stage, doing it in the moment, there's nothing that will ever, um, you know, get better than that. But what I feel about it now is simply blessed blessed. Absolutely. And uh, as are we to have you as our special guest this evening on the Thank Jim Master so Show Live. This was really wonderful. And I hope the show met whatever expectations that you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you, Jenna. This was really a remarkable and very warm and inviting evening for me and for our viewers around the world, our lovities. And I hope uh, you felt the same way. I did. I appreciate it very much. I thank you. It was my pleasure. We will definitely keep the porch light on for you. Let's stay uh, together and connected and hopefully maybe uh, in the city when we can, we'll have dinner and maybe chat a little more about some of the wonderful things that you're doing and uh, blessings to you, Jennifer. Oh. Thank you, everybody who is watching. It's been oh, a exciting time with you. And thank you, everyone, for the warm, warm comments. Uh, I'm so happy that this time I actually am truly seeing the chat <laughs> and yeah. uh, it, uh, it fills my heart. Thank you so much. Marty has been asking this question all, all okay. the whole time. <laughs> law, law and order. I guess you were on law and order and he remembers yeah, that. Yeah. So he wants to know what it was like being on, now we're going to the television side, uh, being on set and being involved with law and order. He's been asking that throughout the evening. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, Marty is correct about that that it was uh, it was uh, very well oiled. It was inspiring to work with the people you worked with. They had it all under control. It was a warm set. It was a very professional set. I um, mean, you were, you were in and you were out, that much I can tell you, uh, yeah. but you were respected. You were treated really well. Uh, your fellow actors who were in the leading roles uh, were all very warm. Um, I, I was given the opportunity there to actually do um, several, but basically one, one really, really meaningful role with uh, some real uh, heart and, and, uh, and I love to cry. You can see that I love to cry actually, because I've cried several times already tonight. You speak from the uh, heart. You speak my from feelings. the heart. And when I feel my feelings, I often cry. Uh, and I had, I had a really great crying scene. They had killed my husband to get back at me for uh, putting someone in jail. It was like, oh my God. So yeah. I loved doing Law and Order, mm. but who am I speaking to? Marty, right? I that still was have Marty to say, Thompson. Yeah, I still have to say something to you, Marty. You get such uh, exposure doing TV, even you know, like mm. now, you know, like depending upon how many people you know yeah. uh, are are there, so many more people get to see you, and that's really wonderful because you love yeah. touching mm. people. Yeah, but at the same time, when you're doing television, it is not the experience of singing "Roses" turn that you just saw. Well, you know, right. you know, live in front of the audience. and But uh, but I really enjoyed it and I'm proud of my work on Law & Order. Marty saw the episode. He said, what a great episode. Oh, well, I'm <laughs> glad he did because it's, uh, yeah, I'm proud of it myself. Thank you. I, uh, I didn't do as many. I got to do one episode where they had me as a uh, court reporter and they filmed down at the Chelsea Piers down in that's Lower where, Manhattan. That's where they are. That, yeah, that's where they were. And it was through central casting. They somehow, they found me. It wasn't something I solicited. And it was a wonderful, like you say, it was, it really was a beautiful experience. A, a top notch production. And 
uh, crew and uh, very professional and welcoming. And uh, so that was a, a wonderful experience. So uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll see you on that set again and we'll be wearing the, ma the matching colors. In a really <laughs> long time, Jim. <laughs> I was going to say, did our mothers dress us tonight and match us? I think so. I think that's what happened. Your mother said, and I will tell you, since we're still talking about our mothers, when I came to the dinner table, because I made sure that we had dinner early, you know I negotiated with you about the time of this show. Yes. And uh, I, I needed to get her up from a nap and I needed to have dinner on the table. Uh, but when I sat down in this color sweater, she said, oh, I love you in that. <laughs> See? The moms have Mothers good Mothers will be proud. Yes, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> This was wonderful, Jenna. And again, thanks for all the wonderful time and all the loveities are saying they had a wonderful time and enjoyed oh your presence. And you're welcome back anytime. I wish you continued joy and blessings and uh, good Thank health you. to you and your mom. And uh, we will definitely chat again soon. Thanks for gracing Thank us you. with your presence. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Isn't she amazing? A blessing. Thank you for all the great comments as well. Let's take a look at some of them. Thank you for sharing. That's Marty Thompson in uh, Nashville. And uh, I love this. I love this. David uh, Smith says, hope to see you on stage again soon. Jenna, hugs to you. David, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Marty says, what a great episode. Thank you very much. Uh, Rodney says, amazing to listen to this and hear about your career over the years. Thanks so much, uh, for of yourself, love ya. And that's what we do here on the show. We don't rush. We have good, warm, inspiring conversations, sort of that old school talk show style. We don't have to, you know, life is filled with rushing. We're rushing here, we're rushing there. The inboxes, the emails, the uh, tweets, and Instagram, and all the stuff we gotta do, right? Well, uh, we take a little time. And maybe you got a chance to learn something about uh, Jenna, the person. Maybe you've seen her on television, on stage. Maybe you've, you know, followed and admired her career. And now you know a little bit more about the person behind all of that. And I think that's a little bit of an extra thing we do here on our show. And I always love to do it, even in my professional work. Um, I love the question, why? Because like Jenna was saying, I like to uh, feel it. Once I feel it, then we work on the nuts and bolts of the how, when, where, and who. Uh, Jennifer Barry says, Jim, can we have Jenna back? <laughs> sure, absolutely. We will definitely have her back. Well, I said we'll keep that porch light on for her. Juanita in South Africa says, uh, thank you, Jennifer, for sharing your wonderful career and stories with us. Stay blessed. David, thank you for joining us. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Hope you'll join us again. We've got another amazing person joining us tomorrow. Charles Bush is joining us. Yes, another incredible producer, director, performer, and so much more. He's going to be here tomorrow live on the Gym Masters Show Live. Incredible singer, songwriter extraordinaire, Joni Pilato, live from Chicago. She's going to be here coming up on Friday. We're very excited about that. Dr. Barbara Milton is going to be here on Saturday afternoon. Uh, she wrote this wonderful book um, that I'm very excited to uh, have an opportunity to share with you. And it's about how she, we talked about mothers and things of that nature, how she uh, cared for her mother uh, during time of Alzheimer's. And Dr. Milton was a beautiful person inside and out. She's a dear friend. She'll be with us at 3 p.m. Eastern. We're doing two shows on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, and that'll be noon Pacific. She has her new book. She has some wonderful stories to share with us. And again, uh, she herself has uh, dealt with cancer uh, recently too, on and off. So she will be with us on Saturday afternoon. And then on Saturday night, the one and only Hollywood legend, D. Wallace is going to be with us 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on the Gym Master Show Live. She was in E.T., The Howling, The Hills Have Eyes. She was on police woman and the streets of San Francisco and touched by an angel and uh, you name it. She is absolutely amazing. In coming weeks, tennis legend. This is, of course, Patrick McEnroe. He's going to be joining us. His brother, of course, John McEnroe, both of them tennis stars. And uh, Patrick is uh, a correspondent for ESPN. You probably see him there as well. On Sunday, originally with Celtic woman. We have Evan McCoon. She's going to be here. 
And um, she uh, it goes by Ava now with her new CD. Um, and she's going to be with us. Ava is going to be with us on Sunday. She's going to sing live. We've got all kinds of great music with Ava. And that's Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern because she's going to be in Ireland so when we have guests that are overseas, we tweak the time a little bit so their fans and followers and our viewers overseas can watch live. So Yvonne McMahon is, McMahon is going to be joining us, uh, or Ava is going to be joining us. Again, she originally was Celtic woman, uh, part of Celtic woman, and so much more. Also from Celtic woman, in coming weeks, Lisa Kelly is going to be joining us as well. And we have a wonderful time with her. Uh, she's a dear friend. I interviewed her on public television many, many times over the years. We've stayed in touch. Ryan Kelly is going to be with us from Celtic uh, Thunder, live from Ireland as well. We look forward to that. And um, so many incredible guests from all walks of life are with us. We are booked with guests all the way into June. And here it is only April. Brilliant singer, songwriter Nathan Pacheco is going to be with us. I uh, interviewed him on PBS a number of times. Last time I saw him, he was performing and I was emceeing at Carnegie Hall for our dear friend Tim Janice's uh, Christmas uh, holiday concert extraordinaire. So we've got a lot of great uh, entertainment coming up for you. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we created about a year ago, um, an extension of my professional work in television and radio. And it's here to entertain and inspire and to uh, hopefully thrill you uh, as often as we do. You guys are the best. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, gang. We would love that. That really, really does help the show. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily exciting content. We're always doing daily episodes. Today, we did two episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We also have our Master's Mantras visual and verbal inspirational series of short videos, kind of like TikTok videos a little bit. Uh, that series is on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV uh, as well. This has been a great evening. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And thanks for all the comments. And Christine in North Carolina says, Jim, this was an excellent episode with Jenna. I did learn much more of her career in life and a very beautiful conversation. And thanks to Jennifer for sharing a brilliant career. She has passion and she sure has lovity. Absolutely. And you remember when Nathan Pacheco was with us at Carnegie Hall. That's right. He is terrific. He's going to be coming up on the show. And good to see you, Kathleen. And uh, more coming in here. Kathy Short in Cleveland. Got to run. Thanks, Jim, for another great show. Have a good evening. You too as well, Kathy. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Good eye, David. Not only is that an eye dream, that's the official eye dreamy genie bottle. That's Jimmy the Clown. That is Silver, the lab that uh, we got on a television shoot when I was in Europe and brought him back. I pretty much said to the uh, shop owner, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> that is Gilligan, uh, Dream of Denver, who is a wonderful actress and author of uh, several books. She was a guest twice on our series and she saw the set and she said, uh, Jim, you're missing something. I said, what could we possibly be missing on our set? She says, you're missing Gilligan. She was the wife, of course, of Bob Denver, who played Gilligan and who also was on Dobie Gillis. So she sent us the Gilligan doll. A dear friend sent us that collectible right there. That is Casper. That's about 25 years old. That is a rare collectible, uh, part of their family. And they said, we want to see it on the set. So they passed that along and that uh, glows in the dark. <laughs> that is, these are, you know, really very special items here. And then it's a silver crystal, not silver. That's a crystal turtle, a friend of mine, uh, actually, I believe it's Swafsky's. Um, they realized that when I was a kid, I had turtles and loved turtles. And all of a sudden that appeared as well. There's a beautiful sign over here that's custom made, came from Nova Scotia for one of our Lovety viewers, Karen Campbell Green. Uh, it says, welcome to Lovety Hall, spread the Lovety. She had an artist make that uh, because we talk about Lovety a lot here on our show. So good eye, David, that is the I Jimmy Genie bottle. You got it. Um, sort of harking back to my television. Anita, you as well. Hope you guys enjoyed two episodes of the Gym Master Show Live. A laid back casual version this morning, <laughs> pop up. Uh, I know you guys like the pop ups. So we 
we really didn't give you much time. We just, uh, within 10 minutes of doing the show, I had 10 minutes of time. I said, uh, okay, we just got in from cycling and biking, 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 cycling and biking, cycling and biking on the coast. And I got to get ready for my professional work. So maybe I'll pop in and I'll surprise everybody. So we got a cup of coffee. I was still casual from being outside on the coast. And uh, we had a vanilla scone that we had made over the weekend. Long gone. It was here this morning. We showed it to you on the pop-up show. And we had it with the coffee. And we had a coffee chat with all of our viewers around the world. And many of you were here, which is absolutely incredible. Yes, Allison Arngrim, who was on our show, you remember, from Little House in the Prairie. She was a guest on our show. You can see all, that episode and all the episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series on our YouTube channel. She was the voice of Casper the Friendly Ghost. She was also the voice of Davy from Davy and Goliath, and I believe Gumby as well. Definitely enjoyed both shows, Jim. Always thank you, Juanita, as well in South Africa. And uh, June, thank you as well, my dear friend. Night all XOXO. Say hi to uh, Jerry and, uh, and the gang for me as well. And uh, Juanita says, great show, a wonderful guest once more, Jim. My pleasure. And Marty Thompson says, I just felt like I've been chatting with you guys in, a New York, in New York in a bar over a couple of martinis. Lovely, lovely guest. Yes, that's the way we do it here on the Jim Masters Show Live. It's all about lovety. Good night, Mr. Lovety. Good night, loveties as well. I know you guys have a thing for the chairs. So there you go. You want to see the chair? There's the chair shot. You know how we always say that sometimes we see the chairs because uh, the guest has to dash off somewhere and then come back. There is your chair shot. <laughs> and I know you guys are happy. Chair, chair, chair. You guys are the best. We will uh, see you. Thanks, Jim. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. Good night, all, and stay safe. You as well. Don't forget, gang, we always say here at the Gym Master Show Live, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity. Don't forget to find your Zen place living along the coast here in the Northeast. Uh, the ocean is a Zen place for me, as is time spent with loving family and friends. That's number one. And then cycling and uh, my work in television and radio and stage on air, on camera, behind the scenes, all these years with the various venues and places I've had an opportunity to work, do what you love, love what you do. That is another Zen place for me. And of course, the ocean. Swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, floating it, uh, floating in it, and respecting it, of course, and walking it. So find your Zen place. The Gym Masters Show Live is here for you, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live, daily. About 400 episodes, I've been told, we have done. I can't believe that. Willie in Holland uh, has been with us about 300 of those episodes, I think she said. Um, so <laughs> we've done about 400 episodes. That's longer than some TV series last. You can find them all on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Binge watch. A lot of people like to binge watch some of the amazing conversations that we've had. And again, do subscribe to our, uh, YouTube channel. I would love that. Love that. Yes. Chair time, chair time. You got a chance to see the chair as well. Good night, all you as well. We will be back tomorrow, gang. Uh, we love you all. It's always a blessing when you are here. And uh, one more thing we always do here on the show, uh, we say relax. Don't forget to relax. Don't forget to love one another and, uh, you know, breathe. Everybody here at uh, the Gym Master Show live, we welcome you. It doesn't matter your zip code. It doesn't matter your religion, your political views, your height, weight, your, your gender, your you know, income, zip code, everybody's welcome to the party here at the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. So uh, love one another and don't forget to love yourself. It's very important. Not in a narcissistic, uh, egotistical way, uh, in a way that gets you to realize that you are of great importance and you have value as well. So don't forget to relax. And as always, of course, you know, who was with us tonight, I showed this to Jenna uh, before the show and then during the show, and she really enjoyed. George Burns was with us this evening, and he says a very pleasant good night to all of you loveties all around the world and the new loveties who joined us tonight on the Gym Master Show Live. George says good night. We toast you all. We'll be back tomorrow. Whew. 
It's been a busy day. Uh, we did a show earlier, a pop-up show. Then I was on the air for many hours uh, today in my professional work. And then here we are back with you for an evening edition of the Gym Master Show Live. We go out in style and we toast you and you and you and you and you. We thank uh, once again our lovely guests, our very talented guest, the extraordinary uh, Jenna Robbins for joining us here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Hope you guys are here tomorrow. We shall be here with another incredible episode for all of you. Good night, Gym Masters and lovely friends. See you all tomorrow. Good night all as well. Gang, you're the best. We love you all. Continue to spread the word about our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. It's a unique place that we have created here. Uh, really amazing, uh, very different than things that are out there online or even on television or radio these days. And um, we're bringing back the lost art of conversation and having a lot of fun doing it with all of you with a modern vibe and a modern twist. Don't forget uh, to check us out on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Also, um, in addition, and you can find me on Facebook at Gym Masters TV, Instagram at Gym Masters TV, and Twitter at Gym Masters TV as well. Amy, who is here for two shows today as well. Good night and God bless to you, Amy, as well. Yes, good stuff, good stuff. And all day long, Jennifer Barry has been talking about her Alaskan king crab. <laughs> and I hope it was delicious. You were making that. I think you had Alaskan king crab and egg salad. If I remember correctly when we had our uh, host chat pop-up show this morning. Um, I hope it was delicious because you were making it early then. <laughs> Slancha, you took a picture. Send us the picture. We'll show it on one of our upcoming shows. Uh, well, I, you know, you got me hungry. You've been talking about the Alaskan king crab and egg, egg salad all day long. Now, see, Juanita, we, everybody wants to see the picture. So send us the picture <laughs> and we'll do another uh, foodie episode. Gang, you're the very best. Love you all. You guys be well. Take care. Thanks again for joining us in this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. For all of us here, you're a blessing. Spread the word about our show, and you are having your Alaskan King Crab and Egg Salad now. Perfect. Yummy and enjoy. They're in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Jennifer Barry is now Zen. And Ann Wozniak says, good night, Jim, and everyone. To you as well, wonderful Ann, who knows where to find the best chocolate-covered pecans in the world. <laughs> I know from experience twice. Good night, Ann. Good night, everybody. We love you all. You guys uh, take care and be well. well. See you tomorrow on the Gym Masters Show Live. Special guest Charles Bush is going to be here. It's going to be another amazing show. Be well. Take care. Good night. Mm -hmm.